Good afternoon, everybody. Everyone present here, speakers, as well as listeners. I am Saurabh Lohani. The real question is, people ask a lot, is there a life after death? What happens after death? But nobody, including me, probably you, and not a single being in this or on this planet would want to talk about death. We so want to know what's after life, but yet this life is so beautiful that we do not want to give it away. There are certain or several incidents in my life from where I have learned several things from people living and people who made their way out of this world making better for generation, for me, for you, and for everybody else. There are such three stories or three incidents that I want to share with you today, which from which I learn a lot in my life. And I do believe that there's life after death. The life after death is what you live or what you leave behind when you're gone. The story starts from my father. Probably you've heard this story, but it's not completely the story that is on the media, but it's something connected with that. It starts with my father. My father was diagnosed with cervical cancer in 2003. Yeah, people say I have his looks, but I don't know. Yeah, you can laugh. <laughs> he was one positive person that I ever came across in my life. My idol, my hero, probably yours as well, your own fathers and mothers. One positive person, five feet, seven inch tall, half bald, milky white skin, and a person who's never complained about his life. As soon as my mother and my father were married, my father was 24 and my mother was 18. They got married. As soon as they got married, my grandfather, due to his ill health, he made his way out of this world and the responsibilities was passed on to my father. He was so positive about being a doctor. He wanted to be a medical doctor. He wanted to study, go to India, and become a doctor. He was left with two choices at the age of 24. Number one, take care of his doctor being MBBS, take care of his degree. Number two, take care of two mothers that his father decided to marry, two younger sisters, and two younger brothers. When I was growing up, I thought this thing happens only in Hindi movies, in Hindi cinemas. You know, one sacrifices their life for their brothers and sisters. But let me tell you this, my father made the hard choice. On the confluence of choosing his own career and choosing his family, he decided to choose his family. He decided to take care of his family but never in life he complained about what he had to sacrifice and what he chose for. I never got to hear his story from himself, but I heard this story from the relatives, from neighborhood, and as well from my grandmothers, that how he wanted desperately to become a doctor. My father, to balance the economy in a very huge family, I don't know what he did not do in this world. He was a businessman of hardware supplies. He, as well, was a contractor for drinking water supplies. He, as well, had a liquor store wholesale. He, as well, has a cashmere production company, Pashmina. He used to make Pashmina, and he used to sell it abroad. I, when I was growing up, I didn't see my father for days. My mom used to cry because she didn't know if my father was going to come home after He's gone out of the home. There was no cell phone, nothing. No ways to contact a person who's left home. I saw that he had sleepless nights because sometimes he used to come home at 3 a.m. in the morning. No food for several days. No family to talk to. He, he used to get completely disconnected. He always told me he was a happy man. He did what he had to do, and he has no complaints with life. 
My father, when he was diagnosed with cervical cancer and towards his end days, I thought, my, my old man, my big man, he's such an accomplished person. He lived his life the way he wanted to. I believed he didn't have to go crying from this world. But towards his end days, he always cried like a little baby. Those days I told myself, oh my God, this is how I'm going to end. This is how we probably everyone in this world is going to end. This is probably everyone's fate. No matter how we live our life, we are going to exit this world crying and begging for one more day. So what I learned from my father's demise, number one, is live your life the way that you want to be. The way that you want to live. I want to quote a motivational sp uh, speaker, I think Les Brown. What he said was, a tree can just be a tree. A dog can just be a dog. But we human beings, we are limitless. We can be anything. I that day decided that I would, in my will and power, become anything and everything that I want to become if that thing gives me joy. The stage that I'm speaking from right now, this is the school where I had worked as a teacher for four full years. I have become a businessman. This thing, this lesson from my father had taught me to opening one of the first backpackers hostel in Nepal. There was no concept of startups back then. It was just business. I then decided I want to become a trainer. I became a trainer. I'm working for one of the most successful training companies in the country. I then added up more businesses. We, we, let's say, added up more businesses, and we added businesses in the field of education, in the field of trainings, and in the field of social work. Because I want to get out of this world, even though if I cry, I would think that I did almost everything that I wanted to do in my life. That's my mother. She's alive. All right. My father left my mother widowed at the age of 40. She was just 40 when my father left the world. Before this, let me talk about my mother. My mother is the eldest of the daughters my grandfather decided to have in search of a boy. And out of seven sisters, she is the oldest. A very humble person, dedicated her life to me, my sister, and God. She never had any working experience whatsoever in lifetime. She had completed her intermediate studies, I don't know, back probably when she was 17 or 18. And since then, she never thought of going back to school. She thought that she has a life that she always wanted. She had one of the best spouse in the world, and she was living the life of her dreams. But suddenly, when my father left this world, we were not only emotionally shattered, but we were shattered financially. This could be your story as well. We were so, so shattered that I would have to probably work all my way out to get even probably 10 rupees back then. Neither I had the capacity to find a job, nor I was in a position to ask my mother. At the age of 40, she went down training in English language and beauty parlor course. She wanted to make sure that there still is a hope. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you this. I have two lessons to share with you from my mother's life. And the fact that she wouldn't live with me forever, that's painful. But she would one day orphan me, and that's for sure. Number one, lesson number one, you're never too old you're never too weak to start anything in any given point of your life. I remember she used to come home. At times she used to cry because her employer didn't give her the entire salary. I don't know for what reason. She didn't have any knowledge of investment whatsoever. She used to get scammed by scammers saying that if you invest in this, you're going to get this much. But she, would, she lost, I don't know how many lakhs of rupees in investments. And she would have a downtime. But when she came home, we asked her, Mommy, what happened? She always says, nothing. We used to say, share your story. And she said, nothing. 
Are you sad? She used to say, how can I be sad when we have, or when I have such wonderful kids like you? Lesson number two. There are always people who are going to pull you down. They're going to make you feel like you are good for nothing. Going to make you feel like you are nobody. But as well, there are other side of the people who love you. Who think that you are important. Who think that you have come to this planet to make some change. Who think that you are powerful beyond your measures. I learned that I need to live this life. The life goes on for the people who live and who are around you. Moving on. She taught me that the dream that you have in life is for free. The hustle is sold separately. That's me. I'm not dead. All right? I'm still alive. But I could be dead right outside of this hall. Or 10 minutes after this speech. Or probably 10 years. My wife is in this hall and she might get the chills by me speaking about my own death. But death is something which is unevitable. Before moving on to my own death experience or my encounter with death, I would want to share something that I saw in a restroom in the United States when I was studying. I entered a public restroom. And when I saw that restroom, there was a writing. It said, please leave the restroom clean for the next person to come. Then when I was making the speech, I saw an article which said, Japanese fans cleaning the stadium for the next game to happen. And further, it reminded me of the endless books and literatures that I had read about endless personalities who always wanted to create something that lived behind when after they are gone. I started asking questions to myself. What have I done? Let me go back to the first thing that I said. Life after death is what you leave behind that leaves what leaves even after you're gone. What have I done that I would live even after I'm gone? The businesses that I do, probably the work that I'm doing or the places that I'm, that I'm engaged in is just for my wife, for my mother, for my family, and for my kids to come. That's for the life before I die. What's for the life after I'm gone? And that thing intrigued me a lot. And I figured out the life after I'm gone is my YouTube videos, the motivations, the social work that I'm engaged in. I'm able to make changes in probably about 100,000 people by now. I think that is the thing that lives even after I'm gone. I leave this session to you with a question. How do you want to live after you are gone? Thank you so much.